Maintaining up-to-date lists for your favorite decks is hard work, so let's try and make it easier. Today, I'm looking at upgrades, what they're replacing, and some cards that look better than they are. This is what not to pick up. The mechanic I'm most excited for from the set is Spree. It offers modes which represent resource density and also lies about its mana cost, which is important to a lot of decks. One deck these cards are important for is Kalamax the Stormsire. Kalamax uses red copy spells to copy, well, red copy spells, infinitely many times and grow infinitely large. It also uses modal spells that protect the deadly dino when we need to, and otherwise profit when we don't. Once large and in charge, Kalamax needs to be able to go through enemy blockers, either with evasion or sweepers. For those reasons, I'm picking up these cards. Three steps ahead can protect Kalamax, or draw through the deck, or both. While Return the Favor is likewise an infinity enabler and a protection spell. While Trash the Town is card draw, evasion, and can threaten additional commander damage knockouts by growing Kalamax in the, mean in the mid game. They'll be replacing these three cards in the deck. Hunter's Insight draws many more cards but requires an unblocked Kalamax, and is virtually useless at all other times. Aethergust has been a pet favorite card of mine for some time, and it's served me well, but ultimately its utility does not begin to compare with what Three Steps Ahead offers. One card I'm not including, though, is Caught in the Crossfire. It is very similar to three other cards in the deck, but unlike these the cards, Caught in the Crossfire ignores significantly more creature types and will likely leave more creatures on board than we really want from these spells. Next, if you're familiar with my build for Wilson and with Cultist of the Absolute, you know that there's a spot for one mana auras and equipment that help accomplish the other goals of the deck, as well as one mana creatures that replace themselves when they leave the battlefield. That's where Lava Spur Boots and Nizumi Link Breaker come in. Not only do the boots give Wilson another layer of protection, they also give him haste, so that if he ever is removed, we can get right back in the game. The Nizumi Link Breaker is also an excellent addition to its category of cards since the body that replaces it can also grow Wilson. They'll be swapping out these cards respectively, since flying Death Touch blockers rarely come up and we don't have enough of a critical mass of ETB discard for the Virus Beetle to make a huge impact. Speaking of Enter the Battlefield discard though, Braids, a Risen Nightmare, runs a lot of these effects to preemptively protect her win condition, so Tiny Bones Joins Up is fantastic here as is Nizumi Link Breaker, which will both be swapping in for Tenacious Underdog and Blood Soak Champion, respectively. However, even though we use a lot of discard effects, Rush of Dread is both too expensive and too small in scope. We want to make each opponent discard, not just one opponent, and we want it to be on a permanent that we can sacrifice rather than on a sorcery. There is one honorable mention here, too, as Karavek can actually recover an enchantment combo piece from our graveyard at a reasonable rate, which was one of the reasons we aggressively emptied enemy hands like this to begin with. Speaking of the joins up cycle, if you're familiar with my Jota deck, you know that we have a heavy focus on legendary creatures with mana values 3 and 4, so that we always get maximum value from our cascade. And if you're really familiar with my personal build for the deck, you know the secret sauce that makes this build really unique. The best legend in the deck, and the single two-cost legend in the deck, Jirina, Dauntless General, who guarantees protection for Joda, and a decent chunk of our other legends, which just happen to be humans. After adding in Path of Ancestry, and a handful of other pieces that care about the human creature type, this deck really starts to care more and more about having humans in the deck, as well as ways to recur many of these sacrificed legends from the graveyard so it's no surprise that Honest Rutstein slots into this list. He'll be replacing Kethis today, as Rutstein has a better mana cost, better creature type, better cost reduction, and even better graveyard recursion, since this deck protects its board so well that it never really has three legends in the graveyard, but it could just as easily have one in the graveyard, and casting it from your hand rather than from the graveyard triggers Jota. Even though Annie Joins Up is not a legendary creature and we have a heavy emphasis on creatures specifically, it is making it into this deck. Jota cares most about legendary creatures, and that's absolutely where we need to put our legends, but there are a few non-creature legends that are extremely valuable to our game plan. When you think about whether a non-creature legend should make the cut, it needs to do one really important thing before you even consider it, and that is not get in the way of the rest of the deck. 
that means it needs to be at least mana value 4 so that we can still cascade into legendary creatures and still guarantee protection for Jota. Great examples would be Urza's Ruinous Blast, the Great Henge, and the Indomitable. For these reasons, the other join-up cards will not be making the cut. The only other card that would be eligible is Rakdos Joins Up, and we just don't need to spend 5 mana on this. Both of these effects care about really being in a sacrifice deck a lot more than this deck is really meant to be, so we'll be passing on it. Really quickly, I'll talk about Bovine Intervention in Megatron, who wants an interaction that can leave behind small bodies. Rolling Earthquake is the more expensive of our burn spells, which is the least effective category of spells in any Megatron deck, since they're only online when you have a flipped Megatron and somewhere to pour the mana into. There are two X spells in the set, but neither of them translate the mana we're making into a win, and the artifacts we want to sacrifice have mana values 3 and 4 for reasons I've talked about at length. Of those artifacts, none of them leave behind extra creatures, generate damage, or draw us further into the deck, so we won't be picking up any of them. Henzi wants creatures as close to 4 mana as possible that do well in combat, and wins with a combo that requires a modestly stocked graveyard. Bristlebud Farmer checks off all of these boxes and more by churning out extra card advantage. We'll swap it in for Sporocyst. And while Akul also checks some of these boxes, he's not actually eligible to receive a discount from Henzi's Blitz, so we'll be ignoring him. Simone and Dina absolutely wants Omen Path Journey to pick up more gates. Specifically though, the way we'll be playing it is by only searching for however many gates we have in the deck past 9 since anything more would leave our strategy vulnerable to opponents removing this enchantment. Since our commander also commits a crime when we use their ability, we can also make use of Free Strider Lookout to find more gates. We'll replace the Ringo South and Farhaven Elf. While the lands in this set are crazy good, none of them are actually contributing to this particular strategy, and the only thing somewhat relevant is Pillage the Bog, but that's basically just a bad tutor, and we can do a lot better if we really wanted to. Even though their decks are wildly different, I want to talk about Brea and Urza together, because there are three artifacts that are very interesting to talk about. First, in Brea, Fomori Vault and Magda both take advantage of our artifact count, as well as Brea committing crimes to dig through the deck and generate more tokens respectively. We'll swap them in for Darksteel Citadel and Cleansing Wildfire. Urza also wants three steps ahead to protect himself and add constructs, while also potentially digging through the deck, and we'll be swapping it in for Dalek Squadron. Now the big ones. Esoteric Duplicator, Simulacrum Synthesizer, and World Walker Helm all have very relevant text for artifact-heavy decks, but I think Brea really only wants the Duplicator and Helm, since the Synthesizer doesn't natively make those constructs from blinking on many things other than Brea herself. Meanwhile, the Helm turns out tons of artifact fuel, and has an ability we can use to make new tokens without having to spend additional cards. The Duplicator is just fantastic by itself, but if you paired it with Quirk Clan Ironworks, not only would you have the makings of a combo, but you also protect your board from interaction by bringing them back at the end step. Urza, I think, only wants the Helm. It's not a sacrifice heavy deck, so the duplicator has limited use, and many of our artifacts are tokens, so the synthesizer will always underperform. But the helm can turn out extra constructs, as well as extra power on those constructs. That's all I've got from this set. Did I miss any cards you think would be a great additions to your decks? Let me know in the comments below. See you next time!